In this video, we'll check how to verify PRT file we generated from a phone is debug level. I'm going to highlight here a few items and we'll actually look at it in real time as I go through the workflow. Once a PRT is generated from the phone, we're going to actually download it directly from the phone. And then we're going to unzip it via 7-zip. So you'll most likely have a scenario as listed here. You'll access the phone with Chrome or other browser like Chrome. Once you generate the PRT file and download it from the phone's web GUI, it'll be basically downloaded into the downloads folder. This example was done on a Windows 10 computer. And then within the downloads folder, we use 7-zip to unzip the actual PRT. There's going to be two layers of compression or zip. And so once we go through layer one, layer two, we'll have this basic root directory, which will just say PRT-log. And then we want to open up a file that says CFG.XML. Inside this file, that's the CFG.XML, one of the lines is going to be listed as debug level. And it's going to show what the debug level is. In this case, the debug level is actually debug. And that's exactly what you want if you're troubleshooting. By default, it's notice. So this is something once you have an issue and you generate a PRT and you download the PRT, you want to go ahead and unzip it as I'm illustrating above here. So it's going to be under the downloads. And you're going to take 7-zip, unzip it. You'll have a folder that says PRT-log. Tar. And then once you unzip that, that will be like the second level. Then you have a folder that says PRT log. We go into the folder. We have a CFG.XML file. We open it. In this case, I'm using Notepad++. And then within that, we'll have a debug underscore level line. And by default, it's notice. We want to make sure that our file is debug level. And I'll show you in a few moments specifically what in WebEx Control Hub we need to set to make sure this is debug level. One item I would like to point out is it's also very critical that you download the file directly from the phone. The reason being is if you just let the file upload to the cloud and you download it from WebEx Control Hub, a certain percentage of the information within a file will be obfuscated or in other words it'll be anonymized or scrambled if you will and it'll make things more difficult when it comes to troubleshooting and tracing and connecting the dots on actually what's occurring with the phone so just some items to consider okay we're going to go ahead and access the phone via web browser we're going to type in https colon forward slash forward slash and the IP address for this phone will be 192.168.1.22 okay we're going to click on advanced we're going to click on proceed to 192.168.1.22 Okay, we're going to go into the Debug Info tab. We're going to click on Generate PRT. If we had an issue with the phone, we would want to select the proper date of problem, time of problem, and problem description. In this case, the phone does not have an issue. I'm just showing this as illustration. So I'm just going to choose Other. I'm going to leave this as is. Click on Submit. This part may take 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 seconds, depending how much information a phone actually has logged. As soon as the phone finishes gathering the debug level PRT information, it will give, a, give us a prompt here in a few moments. Please keep in mind, if the phone is used very often, it's a heavy used phone, you do want to generate a debug level PRT as soon as possible. You may want to do it within an hour or two. So it says your data has been uploaded successfully. Okay. 
and then we want to download the debug level PRT directly from the phone. So I'm going to right click where it says PRT log dot tar dot gz and it's going to take a few moments for it to download from the phone here so I'm going to give it a few moments okay then we're going to go ahead and take a look at this file and then I will go ahead and open it or specifically extract the file with 7-zip this will create a folder and then we want to do this one more time and you'll notice that the actual files are two layered as far as the compression goes and what we want to make sure here is we want to make sure the file is actually debug level so I'm going to click on this cfg.xml and I'm going to go ahead and open it with notepad plus plus and then we're going to do a control F and we're going to type in level And if you notice, this is actually debug level. That's exactly what we want to make sure. Okay, we're going to take a quick look in generating a debug level PRT, what steps were taken within WebEx Control Hub. We're logged in as admin. We're going to go to devices. We're going to find a specific phone of interest that we're trying to generate the debug level PRT. We're going to go in and select or click on device settings on the right bottom side here. We're going to go ahead and enable the radio button that says define custom device settings. We're going to basically scroll down here with a vertical bar. We're going to get to a section that says default logging level. By default, it is set to notice. We want to set it to debug. We're going to go and scroll down a tad more on a vertical bar. We're going to come to a section that says MPP Web Access User. We're going to enable that Web Access User. We're going to go and click on Save, bottom right corner. We're going to click on Actions, drop-down menu, top right corner. We're going to click on Apply Changes, top right corner from the drop-down menu. We're going to apply changes or click on Apply Changes a second time. And we should get a green indicator, bottom right corner that indicates the apply changes request was successful sent to the device. Generally I'll wait about 10-15 seconds for the changes to get pushed out to the device before attempting to log in the device to capture the debug level PRT. This page does also list the IP address of the device so you notice it's 192.168.1.22 and then as I shown a little bit in example a few minutes ago we're going to make sure we type in https colon forward slash forward slash and then in this case the IP address is 192.168.1.22 we're going to click on advance towards the bottom center left of the screen. We're going to select or click the proceed to 192.168.1.22. We will go ahead and click on the debug info tab top left corner. We're going to click on generate PRT. We will select the proper date when the problem occurred. We're going to select the proper time when the problem occurred. And then we're going to go ahead and click on the drop down for problem description menu. In this case, since the phone does not have an issue, I'm just using this illustration. 
I will just select other, but if you notice, there's a list of different possible scenarios. Okay, we're going to click on Submit. And this will typically take somewhere between 10, 15, 20, 30 seconds in general. Okay, once it's completed collecting information, it's going to give us a little pop-up window. We're going to click on OK. And then we're going to click on the right side of the screen where it says prt-log.tar.gz. And we should get a pop-up where it downloads to the computer directly, typically to the downloads folder if you're using like a Windows uh, 10 computer. And then just kind of a follow-up on some of the items as far as considerations when collecting information related to three PCC phones. And this is, again, relating to if you're troubleshooting and you're working with a Cisco partner and or Cisco TAC. So basically, um, as I mentioned earlier, if the phone is used often, the PRT log may only record a few hours of logging before the information is overwritten. So you definitely, if this is a heavy duty usage phone, like a call center, you want to within the first hour or two right away generate the debug level PRT. Please document the day, time, time zone when the issue occurred, very critical. Please document any pattern notice that may trigger the issue. So definitely go ahead and um, communicate with the person using the phone and see if they've noticed any specific pattern that, you know, triggering whatever the issue they may be having and document that. Please document the calling and called number when the issue occurs. So again, very critical because when a Cisco partner and or Cisco TAC is going to analyze the debug level PRT, they want to get reference items as far as information to figure out exactly when the issue occurred, if there's any specific element that's causing or triggering the issue. And if it's something that's visual, um, then go ahead and capture a short video clip if it's something visual in a phone that you're noticing, such as on the LCD or the um, the lamp as the phone is, you know, ringing or whatever the issue is, if it's visual, go ahead and, you know, capture a short clip and provide that to the Cisco partner and or Cisco TAC. And then there's if there's any other information that might tie into the symptom that you're noticing with the phone, uh, go ahead and document that and share that with the Cisco partner and or Cisco TAC because they may help with actual troubleshooting efforts. So for example, if you're seeing the issue with a specific phone, like a single phone, but yet you have 20 other phones that do not have that issue, then think about what is different with the phone. Is the phone located on a specific segment of the network, perhaps where no other phones are located? Um, is the usage of the phone a tad different than the other users? So just any clues of information may help with the investigation. Thank you for viewing the video. Hopefully this helps you with capturing the needed information for troubleshooting. Thank you.